Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt, and this is the BMW M2. It's a car that'll be familiar to you if you've spent time on the channel, but now I've had a chance to spend a full week with the car and get to know it a little bit better. So the question is, have my thoughts changed from last video? Today we're hitting the highlights, the best and the rest, starting with the rest. First thing we have to talk about is weight. This thing tips the scales at 3,800 pounds, which is about 200 more pounds than the last generation. And the 3,800 pounds is now within 100 pounds of the Big Brother M4. And we'll see if this is an issue as we talk more about the driving experience. Number two, we're gonna talk looks. Now I will say it's still objectively fairly handsome, but it's just not quite as good looking as it was last generation. I'd still have it over the M3 and the M4, but I guess my favorite objectively good looking M cars are now the eight, the five, and the two in that order. But again, still better than the three and the four. And to be honest, this is the most proper spec that you can get. Zanvoort blue is the best color. And the grille is an interesting shape and it's frameless. And your lower radiator is interestingly unprotected from rocks. And the upgraded LED running lights are a must. And up from there, you have the classic M hood bulge. The profile itself is very classic BMW. Although this new M2 is now four inches longer than the E46 M3, one of the most iconic M cars of all time. And it's sitting on 19 inch wheels up front and 20s in the back. They're cast, not forged, but you have wildly aggressive fender flares front and rear. And of course you have your classic M wing mirror with the fang and you can get a sunroof now. And in terms of the rear end design, you get kind of the headlight design, but flipped upside down. You get a molded in lip spoiler and the classic quad tips. Overall, I think it looks good. And you too could look good, with a new pair of sunglasses to match your car. Now I've teamed up with BMW Motorsport and BMW Eyewear who are sponsoring the channel for this video. So I can show you guys some of the awesome sunglasses you can get to match your car and display your status as a passionate member of the BMW enthusiast community. The styles themselves have a little something for everyone, like the cleaning classic blue lens to aviator with the white stock for the traditional E30 enthusiasts like myself, to the more modern lightweight performance wayfarer style for the X5M driver. And depending on what style you get, you'll get cool little details like M color matched lenses, an M tri-color soft pouch for carrying. And each one comes with a little envelope containing a holographic sticker proving the official authenticity. And the cool thing is you can get these at Kohl's as well. So when you buy the first pair, you'll earn Kohl's cash to then put towards your second, third, and fourth, and seventh pair. Link down in the description. Make sure you check them out. There's some cool styles out there. And this might be splitting hairs a little bit, but this steering does feel a little bit more vague at least in terms of feedback than, than it did last year. Now this could have something to do with the added weight and needing to boost the EPS or electric power steering to, to compensate for that. However, the front end of the car is still super sharp. You get loads of grip from these Michelin PS4S tires. You get great rigidity from the chassis and the front end just dives into a corner, the chassis holds, and then you can rotate with the throttle, but make sure you're in the proper traction setting. Otherwise it'll kind of cut you and then maybe it'll let you slip toward the end of the corner when you really don't want slip anymore. And the fourth thing, we're talking about some of the driver assistance technology, and most specifically about the adaptive cruise. And that's because it doesn't come standard here, which is a little bit surprising. And then on the manual car, like we have here, you can't get it at all, which seems on the face of it like it makes sense, but I have driven manual cars with adaptive cruise before, so interesting. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about on the good side is price. Now the M2 for this generation now starts at about $62,000, which does make it more than a manual Supra, but it's much more car than a Supra. It's also more expensive than a Nissan Z, but see the Supra explanation and multiply it by a few. And then it's more than a Mustang Dark Horse, which is the only real competitor with rear seats. But the M2 is still a more disciplined sports car, at least I think, having not driven the Dark Horse yet. It's six grand less than a base Cayman, you know, the one with the two liter four banger. And yeah, 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 mid engine, etc. But I mean, come on, it's Porsche money. So my opinion, the M2 is still the most performance and practicality for your money. And then there's the engine. <laughs> now, unlike the debut of the first M2, this one comes with the S motor right away. It's the S58, the same engine that we get in the M34 twins and the X34 M twins. Uh, it's a little bit detuned for this M2, 453 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 in about 3.9 seconds. That's with the ZF, not this manual here. The engine is peaky though, and it's it's got a little bit more character than I was expecting for a turbocharged engine. It wants to rev, it wants you to ring it out and have fun with it. You do feel like you have to work a little bit more for it, so it's a little bit more rewarding in that way. It's not just point and squirt. 
The sound is okay, not amazing, but you do have some subtle cracks on the overrun. And if you care about this sort of thing, you get about 19 MPG combined. Number three, we're gonna talk transmission. Now in 2023, heading into 2024 here, it's just nice to have a manual option. It may not be the world's best manual transmission, but you can't get a stick in the Audi RS3. You do have a great pedal box here, and you can leave rev match on. But now you can turn off rev match while keeping traction on as well. And then on the other side of the coin, your automatic is the ZF 8-speed, which we've tested in a plethora of other BMW M cars and is a brilliant gearbox. But despite how good that ZF is, I can't help but feeling like the M2 deserves and should have a manual transmission. And then in terms of dynamics and balance, for this new M2, you get some stuff that you're pretty familiar with, like a punchy turbocharged straight six, power going through an LSD to just the rear wheels, and you have a plethora of different traction options to control more or less slip, depending on how loose you want to get. Something that we first saw in like the McLaren 720S a number of years ago. But you do get adaptive dampers that stiffen right up, whether you want them to or not. Uh, and then you get a brilliant equal weight distribution and a really, really tight chassis. So this thing is really ready to respond. It feels very neutral. You can still with the back end but you do get these really grippy Michelin PS4S tires so the front end is really eager to dive in and the back end does you can just feel that edge right there so you can rotate with power it steps out pretty organically provided you're in the proper traction setting but this is what BMW just does head and shoulders above everyone else and it's powertrains and chassis ultimately it is a brilliant dance partner it is more predictable than it was last year, but don't think for a second it won't let its hair down with you on a country road. And then in terms of the interior details, this is an M car with an M engine, and they are not gonna let you forget it in here. You've got M tricolor everywhere. On your steering wheel stitching, on your seat belts, on your shift boot, on your door card, which is super cool and lights up by the way, and on the seats themselves, which also light up. And of course you can get the carbon buckets, and to me I'd probably skip that, but still, and then in terms of accenting, you can also choose to get your interior almost entirely made of carbon fiber, which is more than I can say for the carbon fiber pack of something like the Audi R8 GT, which I only mentioned because we filmed the other day, but I will say that I'd skip the carbon buckets. They're super expensive and the normal seats here are more comfy for me. But I do think the combination of all the little M tricolor spicy bits here, the cool door card that lights up and the whole steering wheel and dash rimmed with carbon fiber just makes it feel really special here in this m2 it does not feel like the cheapest m car and then it wouldn't be a modern bmw without a bunch of tech stuff right this m2 is the latest to get the new iDrive 8 system which means you get a massive instrument cluster and center infotainment screen you've got things like wireless apple carplay android auto you've got a lap timer you've got a drift analyzer which is hilarious and you have telemetry data you don't have 360 cameras and you don't have the reverse assist feature, but I'm not really expecting that at this price point or with the manual. And yes, your climate controls are in the screen now, but the menu is always on screen, so it's just a touch away and you get used to it in about a day. Plus, you've got a bunch of native apps that you can customize the home screen with, basically just like your phone. I've said it before and I'll say it again, overall, I really like iDrive 8. The graphics are great, the refresh rate is great, it's super responsive, it's loads of customizability features built into the infotainment as well as the head-up display and the cluster. What's not to love? And the last thing that we'll talk about is practicality and usability. Now be sure to check out our Instagram because it's summer here in Wisconsin and that means lake weekends. So we're putting this car to the test. Can the M2 take up me, my wife, our two dogs, and all of our stuff up to the lake for the weekend? Make sure you check it out. Spoiler alert, it did. And after we unloaded it, it was a riot to rip around those farm roads. But anyway, the rear seats are some of the biggest in this segment. They're not huge, but I do have leg room at 6'1", depending on where the driver sits. Headroom is cramped, but what did you expect? And it's the trunk that's brilliant. It's a mildly smaller opening, but it's a huge space in there. Well, huge, relatively speaking. And there's a center pass-through, and you can fold the rear seats from the trunk, which is something you can't even do in some Mercedes SUVs. And with that, it's really kind of hard to argue against this M2 anywhere, which seems like a good time for the final thoughts. So that's the best and the rest of the BMW M2. It is a fun and frisky little sports car with a refreshing amount of daily practicality. I do genuinely think that this is probably the best bang for your buck if you're looking for an everyday sports car. So thank you again to BMW. Thank you again to BMW Eyewear. Make sure you check your link in the description and we'll see you on our lake test on Instagram for the weekend practicality. We'll see you then.